This lesson will cover the following topics. The belts and the tension wheels. The tensioning of the belts. Replacing the belts. Let's look at the function of the belts. The belts are used to transmit the motion of rotation between the components. There are currently two main belt types. The timing belts synchronize the engine distribution. The ribbed belts are used to transmit the motion of the accessories. Each belt is used in the rotation of a driven component as opposed to a driving component. The belts are made of cables and rubber. The belts have to be tight to increase the force on the pulleys. A timing belt or ribbed belt is stretched around the tension wheel. The first type of tension wheel is manual. These tension wheels can be axial or rotary and should be fitted by the technician. The second type of tension wheel is automatic. These tension wheels can be axial or rotary and provide good belt tension when the engine is running. In this section, we covered the following points. The belts are used to transmit the motion of rotation between the components. The belts are made of cables and rubber and have to be tight to increase the force on the pulleys. A belt is strutted around the tension wheel, manual, rotary. Let's look at the belt measuring tension. The tension is a force expressed in newtons present on the inside of the belt. The belt tension cannot be measured directly. You need to cut the belt and fit a spring scale to obtain the measurements in newtons. First, measure the deformation or the vibration based on the tension. There are two principles to follow for the measurement of belt tension. The first principle is measurement by deflection. There is a direct link between the necessary force required to flex a belt, the deformation obtained, the length of the deformed section, and the belt. This deformation force is measured. The second principle for the measurement of belt tension is the vibration method. Just like a guitar, when a belt is stretched tight and vibrating, it vibrates at a frequency proportional to the tension. There is also a direct link between the belt vibration frequency, the length of the insulated section, and the tension of the belt. This vibration frequency is measured. Renault's technical documentation gives two belt tensioning value units. The tension is a force expressed in SEEM units when the recommended measures are obtained by deflection. The tension is a force expressed in Hertz units when the recommended measures are obtained by vibration. There is no direct correspondence between the Hertz and the SEEM units. You should refer to the technical documentation to find out which tension values and tools to use to measure the tension. Let's see how to take the measurement with a tool by deflection. The central measurement pad is positioned on the belt's back. The sensor must be locked by turning the wheel until you hear three clicks and can read the value in SEEM units. Then, compare the obtained values with the recommended values and adjust the tension regulation. Let's see how to take the measurement with the tool in Hertz. The measurement device should be positioned at the center of the section, preferably, to obtain a stronger, clearer signal that is easier to measure. The measurement does not depend on the vibration excitement force or the position on the belt section. In the technical summary notes for the tension values, the belt tension values for all engines are measured in Hertz. Renault recommends the use of this device to measure the belt tension. In this section, we covered the following points. 
To measure the tension in a belt, first measure the deformation or the vibration based on the tension. There are two principles for the measurement of belt tension, by deflection and by vibration. Renault's technical documentation gives the values for belt tensioning in SEEM units and in Hertz. The central measurement pad for deflection measurement is positioned on the belt's back. The measurement device should be positioned at the center of the section to obtain a stronger, clearer signal that is easier to measure. Let's see how the accessories belt is replaced. To remove an accessories belt, release the tension applied by the tension wheel. All removed belts have to be replaced with a new belt. This information is featured in the technical documentation. To refit the belt, proceed as follows. You have to check that the belt ridges have been correctly positioned in the V sections on the pulley. Then, measure the tension on the specific section or release the auto tensioner. Some engines may be fitted with a rubber belt. This rubber belt does not require a tension wheel. It should be fitted according to the specific procedures in the technical documentation. Let's look now at how to replace a timing belt. To remove a timing belt, align the marks according to the crankshaft rotation, then setting the engine. Any removed belt must be replaced. You also need to replace the tension wheel and the tensioner wheels. When the belt has been refitted, stretch the belt around the manual tension wheel or position the auto tensioner. You should always refer to the technical documentation to find the special refitting procedures for each engine. Some engines have camshaft defasers. When replacing the timing belt, check the condition of the defasers. The defasers have to be built into the camshaft. The defasers should not transmit rotation movements when turned by hand. In this section, we covered the following points. All removed belts have to be replaced with a new belt. This information is featured in the technical documentation. Some engines may be fitted with a rubber belt. This type of belt does not require a tension wheel. To remove a timing belt, align the marks according to the crankshaft rotation, then dip the engine. When the belt has been refitted, stretch the belt around the manual tension wheel or position the auto tensioner. The defasers should be built into the camshaft and should not transmit rotation movement when turned by hand.